السلام عليكم The second lecture of infectious disease pathology We continue with bacterial uh, infections and another example of bacterial infection is that diphtheria Diphtheria is acute the transmissible uh, infection of the upper respiratory tract usually caused by chronic bacterial diphtheria and ground positive microorganisms and the transmission of diphtheria is usually by respiratory droplets the disease is characteristically by the, defined by perforation of the microorganism inside the pharynx with the development of pseudomembrane and this is associated with development of systemic symptoms due to the production of toxin from the microorganisms the main site infection is that pharynx this commonly infection may occur inside the nasal cavity and the larynx after the microorganism is inhaled, the coronary bacterium diphtheria implants itself into the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, pharynx, and then get entry, proliferate, and produce toxin. That's this powerful exotoxin. This exotoxin causes necrosis of the mucosa associated with the acute inflammatory reaction and the production of fibrinic purulent exudate. So, Bacterial perforation, fibrinic perimeter state, in addition to mucosal ulceration, produces a gray, white, dirty pseudomembrane over the affected area, as here, the infection affecting the part of the uvula, soft palate, and torso. Then, bacterial perforation produces such toxin, such toxins transmitted through the blood to other organs and affect them. The pseudomembrane is usually formed of necrotic debris, bacterial perforation, and fibrin purulent oxidate. The underlying tissue is usually so vascular that is, any scratching or removal of such pseudomembrane results in bleeding from the underlying tissue. And the major hazards regarding this infection is that when a sloughing of this pseudomembrane results in severe hemorrhage, and severe hemorrhage may cause aspiration of such a blood and asphyxia. Second is that local perforation of bacteria at the pharynx produce exotoxin, and such exotoxin affect many organs, usually in the heart, producing fatty change in the heart and producing myofibrin necrosis, and also the effect of the neurons and nerves, producing polyneuritis and degeneration of the myelin covering of the nerves. Regarding the chronic bacterial infection, an example of this is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis representing a major health problem and chronic infection around the world. It affects usually the uh, lungs and also other organs can be affected. According to the WHO, more than 1 billion affected individuals all over the world. Approximately 9 million cases in newly diagnosed each year with 1.5 million deaths. It's caused by mycobacteria with several species, including Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium bovis. These Mycobacteria, they are basal and they are aerobic. They require air for their preparation. These microorganisms, they are they characteristically characterized by the presence of a waxy coat in their wall. And this waxy coat, when stained with Zen Nelson stain, they retain a red dye. And when we use the acid to for staining, they resist it and they retain the red dye, so this so called acid fast basal dye. This is an example of uh, macrophages, multiple macrophages, with got in their cytoplasm many red basal dye representing the mycobacterium basal dye. The transmission of tuberculosis. Here we talk about the possible routes of injury entry. In case of respiratory tract tuberculosis, the route of entry usually by inhalation of droplets carrying mycobacterium tuberculosis microorganisms. Or in the respiratory tract, usually an infection is caused by drinking contaminated milk with mycobacterium bovis. Regarding mycobacterium avium and mycobacterium intracellular, this usually causes infection in immunosuppressed people. The uh, tissue reaction of how the disease causes damage, how the TB basal cause damage. The TB basal by itself produces no toxins 
our known enzymes like other bacteria as in staph aureus. But the main damage produced in TB bacilli is by human reaction to these bacilli, which is usually type 4 hypersensitive reaction with formation of granuloma. The details of the process of the granuloma. So, microscopically, the bacteria, the granuloma is formed of a central gas necrosis area, followed by a rim of epithelial macrophages, which sometimes unify to form Langhans giant cells, and then we have an outer rim of uh, telophocytes, activated telophocytes. When fibro, when this such a granuloma become chronic disease or takes long period of time, it is usually surrounded by fibrosis. It is sometimes called also tubercle. The healing of such a tubercle is usually by uh, progressive fibrosis, and uh, sometimes the microorganism may remain uh, dormant inside such lesions to be activated when there is suppression of the immunity. So the microorganism, the granuloma, is formed of peripheral rim. All the granuloma is formed of peripheral rim of fibrous tissue, inner rim of activated T cells then epithelial cells, including Langhans multinucleate giant cells, and a central area of gaseous necrosis. This is a photograph of granuloma. Here, central is an ophilic homogeneous material, structureless material, representing gaseous necrosis material, then a realm of epithelial macrophages, and scattered Langhans giant cells, this followed by a realm, another realm of activated uh, T cells. This is high power review. Here we see this is gas necrosis area, epithelial macrophage area, Langhans giant cells, then a realm of lymphocytes and fibroblasts. Regarding the types of tuberculosis, we have uh, primary tuberculosis, secondary tuberculosis, and the progressive tuberculosis and miliary tuberculosis. The primary tuberculosis here, following exposure of the person to TB bacilli in an immunized person that is exposure for the first time uh, to TB bacilli. That is primary means exposure in non-immunized people that have no previous immunity against tuberculosis. Microscopically, the patient usually develops lesion in the lungs. The sub, uh, subpleurally, either in the lower part of the upper lobe or in the upper part of the lower lobe, that is in the mid zone of the lung. Such lesion is called Gons focus. From there, the microorganism may spread through lymphatics to the higher lymph nodes of the lung and establish disease in the uh, higher lymph nodes. And the combination of such Gons focus and higher lymph nodes is called Gons complex or primary complex. Microscopically, is formed of epithelial granuloma associated with gastric necrosis, and such a primary tuberculosis, most of the cases healed by fibrosis, that is 95% of the cases. Whereas, smaller percentage, they may progress to severe primary tuberculosis. In secondary tuberculosis, from its name, secondary tuberculosis means development of TB in a previously exposed person to tuberculosis, that is, in person who are immunized to tuberculosis. And this is either by reactivation of certain viable dormant bacilli present in the primary lesion, or by reinfection from outside. Here, the main lesion usually affects the apices of the lung, the upper part of the lung, with marked granulomatous reaction and formation of multiple cavities. Microscopically, we see multiple granulomas, necrosis, gas necrosis, and cavity formation. And the healing here is usually by fibrosis. A progressive TB, progressive TB either from the primary or secondary TB, and the TB bacilli can be coughed and uh, so enter the larynx, forming laryngeal TB, or swallowed through the GIT, producing the uh, intestinal tuberculosis, or they may enter the bronchial tree, producing bronchial pneumonia, they may enter the pleural cavity, producing pleural effusion, 
or they may break through the lymphatic channels or bloodstream and producing miliary tuberculosis or TB of certain organs such as TB in the kidney. Miliary tuberculosis you mediate by it, it because of its cross appearance is similar to milia. Milia takes name from millet. Millet mean that means the infection of the, the organ usually develop multiple small yellow white fossae nodules presenting two millimeter in size. This scheme represent abbreviation مختصر لأنواع tuberculosis. As we talked before, at first the person has no immunity and when exposed to infection is called primary infection. The infection is usually developed in the subpleural region in the midzone, either in the lower part of the upper lobe or in the upper part of the lower lobe. And this yellow lesion, one to two centimeter, is called Gons focus. Microorganism is transmitted through the lymphatics to the hyaluronic fluids. Hyaluronic fluids are enlarged and evolved by disease with the granuloma, gaseous necrosis, with the gaseous necrosis formation. This combination of lymph node enlargement and subpleural lesion is called primary complex or Gons complex. Most of the cases of primary Gons complex heal by fibrosis, called Ranke complex. Some of them heals also by fibrosis, but with the presence of some microorganism inside them, called latent infection. In minority of cases, this microorganism will affect the whole lung in a pneumonia-like pattern and called progressive primary tuberculosis, and will affect the lung tissue, cause damage to the alveolar wall, and cause damage to the blood vessels. And when damage to the blood vessels, the microorganism get entered to the inside of the blood vessels and then spread through the blood to other organs producing miliary tuberculosis. Whereas in secondary tuberculosis, here secondary tuberculosis, the person has previous immunity to TB and so get second infection. Second infection is either by reactivation of the latent infection in the first one in the primary state and this reactivation usually occurs in people with low incidence area in TB or by reinfection by TB bacilli from other persons and this occurs in areas endemic with TB. So the person develops secondary tuberculosis. In secondary tuberculosis the main affected site is the upper part of the lungs, the epices of the lung and the person have immunity against TB bacilli so there will be formation of a granuloma against the TB bacilli active granuloma and there will be much damage to the apices of the lung with formation of multiple granuloma and cavities. <coughs> this uh, localized destruction to the upper part of the lung. Sometimes such destruction is associated with damage to the blood vessels also and the microorganism get inside of the blood vessels and spread to the other parts of the body and producing miliary tuberculosis. This picture representing a primary complex, cons complex, we see here yellowish white small nodules under the pleura in combination with enlarged lymph nodes with gas necrosis. This combination is called Gons complex. This is primary tuberculosis. Whereas in secondary tuberculosis we see the effect the upper part of the lungs because the TB bacilli are aerobic bacilli, so they prefer the aerated part of the most aerated part of the lungs. And so we see these yellow pale areas representing consolidation with formation of multiple cavities and this white area of a granuloma. This is an example cut section of the spleen affected by multiple small nodules that resemble the millet and this is an example of uh, miliary tuberculosis. Uh, clinical features of tuberculosis usually depends on the organ affected, but when lungs are affected, usually have system that we have cough, hemoptysis, weight loss, and night sweats, and fever.
Diagnosis depends on uh, history, clinical examination, and investigation, and usually detection of microorganisms either in the sputum or in the biopsy using a special stain that is Zeal Nelson stain, or by biopsy of the affected sites, we see a granuloma inside it, gaseating giant cell granuloma, or with the use of PCR, Lomelis chain reaction with the purification of the TB vessel line. Another example of disease caused by, by mycobacterial microorganism is leprosy, or also called Hansen's disease. This disease requires a long period of a close contact with the infected person to be transmitted, and the exact mode of transmission is usually unknown, but it's probably by inhalation. Usually, it affects the skin and the peripheral nerves. Why? Because the Mycobacterium leprae prefer cold areas for its preparation. Usually prefer temperature between 32 to 34 degrees centigrade. And so they affect the peripheral parts, the skin and nerves. Regarding the pathogenesis, the same as TB bacilli or also bacilli of leprobacilli, they do not produce any oxytocin, endotoxin or any enzyme. And the main pathological effects is due to the human reaction, immune reaction against these bacilli or their wall continents by typhoid reaction, and so producing also destructive granuloma. Also, the TB bacilli interfere with the metabolism of H1 cells and affecting the nerve function. The classification of leprosy usually classified according to the immune reaction or immune status of the body of the affected person into lepromatous leprosy, tuberculoid leprosy, and borderline leprosy, that is borderline between lepromatous and tuberculoid. The main differences between lepromatous leprosy and the tuberculoid leprosy. Lepromatous leprosy, here the person has low immunity, there will be no immune reaction, no uh, formation of a granuloma against the bacilli, leprobacilli, whereas in the tuberculoid, here the person have good immunity with the formation of immune reaction against TB bacilli, uh, leprobacilli. Grossly, the lesion is consist of, in the promethous leprosy, of uh, symmetrical anesthetic because affecting the nerve, so affecting the function of the nerve, nodules with deformity and ulceration affecting the face, that is symmetrical nodules on both sides of the face, the producing face similar to the lion called lemon faces, faces, faces. Whereas in the tuberculosis leprosy, the lesion usually asymmetric and also anesthetic and is formed of macule. So it is asymmetric macules involving the face and with palpable thickened nerve. In the promethous leprosy, other organs may be affected, including eye, larynx, and testis, whereas in tuberculosis leprosy, they are usually not affected. This is an example of lepromatous leprosy. We see nodules affecting symmetrically both sides of the face, multiple nodules. Whereas in tuberculoid leprosy, in immune component persons, there will be formation of multiple macules affecting the face asymmetrically. Microscopically, in lepromatous leprosy, the skin and nerve is infiltrated by many macrophages. These macrophages that have engulfed the uh, lepra bacilli inside them, which aggregate called uh, an aggregate, which uh, become an aggregates, which is called globi, and the lymphocytic reaction is usually few with no formation of a granuloma, that is immunosuppressed persons. Whereas in, in tuberculosis leprosy, here there will be formation of all form giant cell granuloma with the presence of lymphocytes and the bacilli usually is counting in number because there is immune reaction against them. In borderline leprosy, the features between is <coughs> uh, borderline, that is of lepromatous leprosy and tuberculoid leprosy, a mixture of those. Diagnosis of leprosy, 
usually history, examination, and investigation. Investigation is by finding a flecklobastal lie inside the macrophages using modified Zeal Nelson stain. And thank you.